Dr. Phil Goodman here, developer of the GTS or Goodman Torquing Spring. I have a small introduction that I wanted to uh, put forth before the presentation so that you have some insight in terms of what was going on in my head when I developed this thing. And what was going on was basically frustration. I would treat a case and it looked awesome. And they'd come back after uh, we've removed the retainers, usually bonded linguals. And within four to six weeks, they'd come back for a check. And we see movement. You see those lingually placed lateral incisors start to move lingually again. What to do? Well, we know that stability means that the crown and the root are in alignment. And if you don't bring the root forward or backward, labial or lingual root torque, the crown will eventually creep back over the root and create that relapse that you see that creates frustration. So that's how the spring was born. The, there are two sizes to the spring, as you will see, because all teeth are not morphologically the same. Obviously, smaller teeth will have a smaller spring and larger teeth will use a larger spring. There are a few keys in this, and one of them is once you have your alignment done, you must figure eight with wire, a 10 ligature wire, three to three or four to four, to be able to hold the crowns in those positions so the roots can come forward. If you are moving more than one, more than one tooth root, uh, I would suggest doing a slight cinch back on the arch wire because it'll have a reciprocal movement to be able to want to move it mesial. So that is something to keep in mind. The other thing is, is that when you see the patient for their initial examination, please check and see what teeth may need a root torque at the end of treatment uh, and mark it in their chart so that uh, there's no confusion. And when the time comes, you will place it. The other thing I noticed is helpful. Sometimes the patient will want to disappear on you. And when you've got 150 grams of force, placed against a crown of a tooth. It's very easy to bring the root to cortical plate uh, if they go away and they must come back within four weeks and I have them sign a release form. It said if they don't, whatever happens is on them, not on us. So that's the other thing that I think is very important um, to make sure that they take responsibility for showing up to check when you get to a point where you think the roots are aligned properly in a class two division two, you're gonna to wanna to take a CEF um, to find out if the, you are in fact lining things up so that the roots are lingually placed. But when you think that you're completely finished and hopefully you are, remove everything, remove all, or leave the brackets on, but remove the arch wires um, and remove certainly the torquing springs. Have the patient go away for three weeks and have them come back. If the tooth starts to move, it's going to need more torque. If it's stable, chances are after retention, it's going to remain stable, uh, which is obviously a good thing. So this is a, that's a, just a small intro that I wanted to give you before the presentation. One more little thing, a little caveat. If you have uh, cuspids that are palatally placed and you need to bring them into place, we all know that the more that the crown of the cuspid is facing the midline of the palate, the more difficult it is to move, and also the more difficult it is to bring the root forward to create a canine eminence. In cases like that, what I will do is I'll take the spring, instead of using it with the curvature going toward the tooth, I will use it with the curvature going away from the tooth. And that will create another 50 grams of force. So instead of 150 grams, you'll be at 200 grams of force. Uh, which is substantial, but it's a very long route and it's coming from a very long distance. So you might want to check that out. Anyway, thank you for watching and listening. And should you have any questions at all, uh, my email is at the bottom of the presentation. Please don't hesitate to contact me. I will be happy to answer any questions. And also know that the spring will fit wires of all sizes, obviously rectangular, 16, 22 and up. Could be TMA, could be beta T, could be copper nitide, stainless steel with square edges. Um, and so there, therein lies the versatility of that. I've also developed a spring, a crimping spring, crimping plier for the spring 
uh, which is called, obviously, a GTS crimping plier. Uh, the reason it's different is it has serrated bait, beaks to hold and also rounded edges on those beaks. So if you slip, you're not going to cut the wire. If you try on a 142 or some of the uh, older pliers that are around, they're very sharp edges. And if you happen to crimp a little too hard, you'll cut the wire and then you get to start all over again. Um, we don't like doing that. So thank you for listening, watching. Um, and once again, any questions, please don't hesitate to call.